Before we get started with any postures, if you haven't done yin before, if it's been a while, this is a very slow meditative practice. So there's nothing dynamic about it. Um, if you feel the cold, now's a good time just to make sure that you've got something near you. Even if you're not cold now, you probably will cool down uh, because we will be stationary for up to eight minutes, um, four minutes on each side, um, so for quite a while. So if you've got a, uh, a blanket, I've got everything nearby. So if you've got a blanket, that would be, that would be good. Um, I think I'll just, let me just change my video for a second. So I go here. Uh, yeah, blanket, um, I've got a cushion, which I'm sat on. I've got a couple of blocks that yoga, um, if you don't have yoga blocks, Cushions are fine, no problem. Um, yeah, jumpers, fluffy socks. We'll be relaxing this evening. So um, just make sure you're warm enough. Um, the idea with yin is that we find our edge. So, oh, Jenny's here. So um, we're not trying, we're never gonna feel pain, but we do want to feel an active stretch. So it's finding that, that balance between forcing ourselves and letting ourselves go. So hi, Jenny. Um, so listen to, your, listen to your body. Obviously, there's not much I can do from here. Um, so I'll have to just trust you to make that judgment yourself. Remembering Ahimsa is the theme of the month. So compassion and kindness to ourselves. Okay, let's make a start. We're going to sit for a while. So I'm going to sit up on a cushion. Um, I'm gonna fold it over in two so that I can elevate my sit bones over my knees and come into a comfortable cross-legged position, something that enables you to, to have a tall spine, sitting up straight, elevating the crown of the head up towards the sky. Closing the eyes. And we're just going to bring the attention to the natural breath here. It may well be the first time today that you've noticed your breathing. It happens. Just start to see, just explore where you're breathing. Are you breathing high up into your chest, which can be the tendency when we're a bit stressed or when we've been rushing around, maybe trying to make this class <laughs> on time. Let's just see if we can bring the breath down into the abdomen. We can always place a hand onto our, onto our bellies just to feel the difference. And as we inhale, feel the belly expand, inflating like a balloon. And exhale, bring the belly button back towards the spine. Keep sitting up tall, relaxing the shoulders. Inhale, expand the belly. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So just keep going for a few rounds on your own. This is conscious breathing. So this is what we call in yoga pranayama, as opposed to just the automatic breath that we do throughout the day. Pranayama is one of the eight limbs of Patanjali's Ashtanga yoga. Ashta, eight anga limbs. So there's eight different parts of yoga. And quite often we associate yoga with just the movement that we do on the mat but there's so much more. And pranayama, breathing exercise, is just one of those, those limbs. But what we're looking at this month is one of the yamas. So the yamas are the, the first of the eight limbs, and they're essentially the moral code of yoga. And the very first one of those, those rules or, or guidelines is ahimsa, which means literally away from our himsa, violence, away from violence or non-violence. And we can switch that into the, the positive form, not what it's not, but what it is, which is compassion. 
So with that in mind, during this practice, as I said before, let's be kind to ourselves, never allowing ourselves to feel any pain, just being respectful, trying to slow things down, just noticing how we are in this moment. Okay, we're going to do just some gentle movement to start. So Daria will know this one. This is from the Monday morning class, mindful movement class. So we're going to inhale and lift our right arm, fingertips up towards the sky. So we exhale, take our right hand onto our left knee or as near as you can get to it. Inhale, take the left hand up towards the sky. Exhale, bring your left hand over onto your right knee. Just going to bow the head heel. So bringing the neck towards the chest. Starting to feel a stretch through, through the back of the neck, through the shoulders, maybe even into the lower back here. I know we've got a couple of injuries in the class, so just be aware of those and we'll work around them. Finding your natural breath here. With every exhale, just bringing, bringing the chin closer to the chest. Stretching across the shoulders. Inhale, come back to center. This time we're gonna go the opposite way. So we're gonna lift the left arm first. Take it over onto our right knee. Lifting the right hand, bring it up to the sky, crossing over the other way and lowering the chin to the chest again. See if you can walk your fingertips down onto your knees, really bowing the head down here. allowing yourself to slowly sink into, into stillness. One more breath here. Exhale. The inhale, come up. Switch the cross of the legs to take the unnatural leg in front this time. Going to clasp our hands behind our backs, making a fist. Draw the fist away from the seat. And this time we can start to creep our way forward, bringing the chest nearer to the ground. Try to keep the sit bones grounded. So just going as far as you can, but keeping the seat down. At the same time, just pulling that fist away from your lower back, opening across the shoulders dropping the head, relaxing the neck. Really nice. Good, Jenny. Take one more breath here. Inhale, we'll come up. We're just gonna come into, I promise that we'll slow down after this, but we're just gonna come into a tabletop position and just do some gentle movement in the spine. So I'm not going to say cat cow, you can do whatever you want, whatever feels good. So if you're really tired, just come back into the last one, child's pose, that's fine. If you want to find a bit of movement, you can just move your hips left and right and come forward. You can do the traditional cat cow, that always feels nice. Arching the spine up towards the ceiling, dropping the belly. Just doing whatever feels good, closing your eyes. Okay, coming back to a neutral position. We're gonna keep the hands where they are. So keep pressing down into the palms and spread the fingers nice and wide. We're gonna walk the knees back so that they're no longer underneath your hips. 
We're coming into a puppy pose here. So opening the armpits, you want to sink the hips back towards the heels. You can tuck the toes or keep them untucked and stretch. So the forearms stay off the floor here. We're not in a child's pose. You can walk them forward if you need to, if you haven't got the space behind you. And we're opening our chest and our armpits towards the mat. If you've got the space, you can release your head down onto the mat. You could perhaps take a block and put that underneath your forehead just to bring the floor closer to the, to the forehead. Just really trying to drop here. This is obviously the area, the physical area of the body that we're going to be working on with ahimsa or compassion in mind. Opening our heart chakra, known as the Anahata, the seat of compassion. So compassion is, is different from love in the way that potentially love could be, we might just expect something in return from love. Compassion is, it doesn't have any limitations to it. We're not expecting anything in return. And I think now is the perfect time to practice compassion. doesn't have to be anything grand, <laughs> any big gestures. It could just be as simple as writing a letter to a friend or dropping something on your neighbor's doorstep. It's just these small things that can really make the difference. From here, see if you can creep the fingertips further away. I'm going to stay here for about another 30 seconds. Sinking the, the chest, the heart actively down to the floor. From here, we're going to go into thread the needle. So again, this is something that we did on Monday, Daria and Lexi. So pressing into your right palm, we're just going to try and keep the torso facing down and the forehead facing down for now, and just lift the left arm up. So the fingertips are facing as far up to the sky as, as you can. They might not go very far. You might have your, your arm at shoulder level. If you can try and extend it up to the sky, real, feel a real stretch and opening across the chest into the shoulder. And then we're gonna take the left hand and thread it underneath our extended right arm. Coming onto our left ear. You can stay here or start to walk both fingertips away, fingertips on both hands away from you really stretching into the shoulder. This can be quite strong, so see how you get on, there's no rush. And we're here for about another minute, so just take your time. Feeling the stretch all the way across the back of the shoulders. We spend a lot of our time hunched over the desk at the moment, I think, so this should feel quite good. One more deep breath here. And the next inhale, we reach the left fingertips up towards the sky. 
exhale, taking them back down. We're coming back to our puppy pose. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So pressing into the left hand, inhale, take the right fingertips up to the sky, opening the chest. Exhale, threading the right hand underneath, the right arm underneath the left arm. Bringing your right ear onto the mat. Again, you've got the choice to stay here or slowly start walking the fingertips away from you. Another 30 seconds here. Keep pushing your hips up towards the sky. One more breath. Inhale, take the right fingertips up to the sky. Exhale, coming back up. And we're going to walk the fingers back towards the knees, coming back onto our shins. We're going to swing the legs to one side and come into a seated position. So we're going to come into Baddha Konasana or butterfly pose. So this is where it's good to have some things on hand. So I'm going to sit back on my, my pillow. Um, but perhaps you could sit on, on a, on a um, blanket or a towel, anything that you've got nearby. Just so that you're, you're comfortable. So you can fold forward without having to worry about it. But First, what we're going to do here is something um, like Jenny will know because we've been doing practice yoga with Adrian together all of January, which has been lovely. Um, and she she encourages lots of self touching of the, the feet and the hands, massage, and it's really lovely. So with that in mind, we're going to take a little bit of inspiration. And whilst we're here, opening the soles of the feet out knees sinking down just going to give ourselves a little foot massage we can really go for it <laughs> working into the soles of the feet with the thumbs we quite often just ignore our feet but we couldn't be without them so showing a bit of appreciation here You don't have to stop there. You can give your calves a bit of a massage, maybe your palms. Just really releasing any tension physically through our touch. Lovely. Nice, everyone. Okay. So we're gonna come into a forward fold here. So I recommend a block or two if you've got one or a book or something. We're going to come into this quite slowly. So don't expect just to come straight in and you're right down at the bottom. I know that might happen for, for example, Jenny, come in. <laughs> um, but we're just gonna take our time. So we're gonna be here for about four minutes. So let's just ease into it slowly, letting our, our abductors loosen just with the weight of our body here. So we're gonna take a nice big inhale all together, extend up through the spine, crown of the head reaching up like we did at the beginning of class, finding some length. We can take our hands 
rather than the traditional Baddha where we're opening the soles of the feet, this time we're just going to take our hands out in front of us. So this will help with bringing the, the weight of the body forward. We're just going to take some really small steps with our fingers forward. So after maybe, maybe two, maybe four, maybe six little steps forward, you might feel like you've, you've reached your limit. And just hold there, see how that feels. This is maybe the point like Alex, that's a really lovely idea, bringing a bolster underneath your head if you've got one, just relaxing down onto that. I really like bringing a block between my feet and my forehead to rest onto. And that just really enables me to, to let go. Just working with what you've got. If you haven't got any props around you, that's fine. But go slow here, especially in Mishari. I know you've got some issues with your, your back. So any twinges at all, just come back, come back a step and you can come into Supta Bada Konasana on your back or just come to upright. So once you've reached that, that place where you feel like you're not gonna go any further without, without going into a painful threshold, which we never want to cross into, just allow your body to be heavy. So there's deliberately no pulling, no pushing here. It's just gravity. And with gravity and with time, we will go deeper into these postures, perhaps without even noticing. quite rare just to let ourselves be still sometimes it's quite a challenge as well so if your mind starts to wander we'll just start to try and gently bring it back to concentrating on the breath not berating ourselves for a wandering mind that's what minds do just kindly trying to bring it back to the present moment. We'll be here for one more minute. So you can either back off, you can come up slightly, or you can choose to walk your fingertips slightly further away, maybe bringing your block down to another level. Lowering down further, finding a bit more space. being patient with ourselves as we just let ourselves unfurl. Very slowly, no jerky movements. We're just gonna start to walk the hands back towards our feet, trying not to rush. Bring the knees together, you can use your hands to help you. We're gonna take the hands behind us and then just windshield wiper the legs left and right, just to release the lower back. We're actually gonna go back into another back bend after this. So we're just gonna try and give ourselves a bit of a break. And then we'll slowly come back down again. Said back bend, I meant forward fold. <laughs> so forward folds are what we're going to be doing. If anyone is um, around on Saturday, we're going to be doing a um, vinyasa flow followed by another yin class, which will be similar to this one. Um, and in the 
in Yesaflay, we're going to be working on Kurmasana uh, turtle pose, and eventually extending the legs out. So all of this is good preparation. Okay, so we're going to come back to our seated position, bringing the soles of the feet back together again. This time we're going to bring the feet further away. So we're now in a diamond position with the legs. And this might be just see how you get on. I've come down a level on my cushion, so I'm just literally sitting on the edge of my cushion. So sitting up tall, finding length again through the spine. We're just going to do the same as we did before. So coming into this, we're not going to stay quite as long in this position, but just coming down gradually with the chest. You can allow yourself just to kind of bow down here and let yourself go. Normally we try and extend the chest and keep the back straight, but actually this time we're just going to let ourselves fold over. You might rest your hands on your feet or you could start to bring your hands underneath your shins, maybe out to the sides, but just see how you get on. Working towards a resemblance of a sort of turtle pose, but if not, we'll just stay in Tarasana and diamond pose. I did a really lovely Ian class with Charlie Merton um, online last week. It was amazing. It was on the full moon day, which was perfect. She's all she's really into astrology and all the, the signs and everything. And she um, she said something really lovely. It was about how we always try to get to the end of the pose in yoga. It's always like, oh, where are we going to get to? Whereas with Yin, it's more of just a like I said earlier, it's an unfurling. Um, and she gave the analogy of a lotus. So the lotus is so used in yoga, but imagine if you try to make it open <laughs> and pulled its petals, they would just, it would just all fall apart. Instead, you just, you just have to wait until they're ready. And it turns into this beautiful flower. So we're trying to take the same approach here. We're here for just one more minute. So you can try to fold a little deeper if you can. Got something to rest your head on here again. That's quite a nice bolster or a block. Just trying to find the weight, letting the weight draw your, your head nearer to the ground. We'll all take a deep breath in here. We're going to breathe out with a lion's breath. So opening the mouth and sticking the tongue out. All together again, breathing in, a deep breath in. Exhale, stick the tongue out, lion's breath. Last time, biggest breath in. Exhale, stick the tongue out. The good thing is no one can see you. <laughs> so slowly we're going to unwind. Coming back to a seated position. We can stretch the legs out here and just give them a little bit of a shake. Just releasing the legs. You can take the hands up behind you again and force a Small back bend, just doing what feels good here. And Shari, take it easy. Okay. 
maybe pointing the toes, flexing the feet. We want to move our necks around. Just finding some gentle movement. Hopefully you can't hear the neck cracks through my, my hair pocket. <laughs> Get one. Okay. And then as gently as possible, we're now going to come forward into child's pose. So my suggestion is a wide-legged child's pose. So bringing the toes together at the back of the mat and the knees wide, but this isn't always comfortable for everyone. So if this isn't for you, just bringing your knees together and then we'll do the same thing folding forward. That's absolutely fine. And um, this is another great one. If you've got a, a cushion or a bolster, you can bring it underneath your chest and make this really restorative, just resting onto the, onto the bolster, onto the, the pillow. If you haven't got anything, that's absolutely fine. It, it's quite nice to rest your head on something though. So if you've got a book or um, a block, then that's, that's quite a good idea. Just to bring your head down onto something, maybe before it touches the ground and then slowly we can work our way down there. Um, so if you're on, on your bolster or on a cushion, you can just kind of hug the bolster in. If not, you can stretch the arms out in front of you. But this isn't the, uh, the puppy pose we did before. So in this pose, we are actively resting. So you can rest your forearms down onto the floor. Just let everything release down, let the body be heavy. Again, we're opening through the, the groin here. Letting the hips just fall down to the, to the mat. I'm gonna read you a little poem here from my, my book, Soul to Soul. Mm, find it. Yeah, okay, so it's called, Is It Peace? What does stillness sound like? What does it sound like when you turn off the television set and phone? What does it sound like when you take a break from talking with family, friends and colleagues? What does it sound like in your mind when you turn off the constant stream of thought? What does stillness sound like? What does stillness feel like? Does it feel uncomfortable? Unfamiliar? Rejuvenating? Calming? What does stillness feel like? What would happen if you stopped thinking about the past? Stopped replaying the same tapes over and over in your mind? What would happen if you stopped thinking about the future, always waiting with anticipation for what is next? What would happen if you brought your focus to this moment? This breath coming in, this breath going out. What is this when you hear stillness, when you feel stillness? when your focus is only on this moment. It is peace. Okay, we're just gonna take five more breaths here in your own time. I'm trying to extend each breath. Slowing everything down. And then from here, we're going to slide forward onto our bellies. If you've got a blanket, you could maybe cover yourself up a little bit here. We're gonna come into a Sphinx pose. 
So just a gentle back bend here. Bringing the elbows directly underneath the shoulders. Forearms on the mat. Spreading the fingers wide. That's it, Jenny. Perfect. Snuggly. <laughs> Jenny card. <laughs> okay. So if you have got problems with your back, try to stay stay low and actually keep your glutes engaged. I know normally we try and let go, but um, you might need a bit more support here. So stay as low as you need to. And if at any time this is uncomfortable, just come down and bring your forehead to rest on the mat. If not, we could take a block and put it underneath our forehead. Just giving it something to relax onto. I have to come back a little bit. So just resting the, the block on, I've got it on its highest level. Keep pressing into the forearms. Don't want to sink too much into our shoulders. So we're trying to keep the shoulders away from the ears. Pressing the hips into the floor. If at any time this is uncomfortable on your hips, you could put, again, a, um, a cushion underneath or a blanket, something soft. Just trying to let the head be heavy here. So in this position, we are energetically and actively, um, physically activating our, our kidneys. So our kidneys right around the back of the body. They're known as the most yin organ in the body, apparently. <laughs> They're hidden deep inside in the darkness. What we're working on here with this gentle back bend. You can choose to stay here, and that's absolutely fine. Or optionally, coming into a seal pose. So, bringing the hands out to mat width apart this time. Slowly pressing into one palm, seeing how that feels, and then bringing the forearm back down, pressing into the other palm, straightening the other arm, coming back down. Just see how you are. And if that feels okay, you can press into both palms, straighten both arms and start to come up in a, into a seal pose. So going slowly here, Obviously, it's absolutely fine to stay in sync. But if you want a little bit more of a stretch, then we can extend the arms here. You all look like actual sphinxes on my screen. That's amazing. <laughs> Again here, just making sure that the shoulders aren't bunched up around the ears, trying to bring the, the shoulder blades down the back. And if your lower back is okay, just do a little scan through the body, see if you can let go of any tension in your glutes. If not, keep holding on or come, come down. We can start walking our hands back towards us as well. So start increasing the back bend if you want more. And if at any time this gets too much, just come down. If your head is lifted, maybe just see what it feels like just to drop the chin to the chest like we did at the beginning of the practice. You can get an extra, an extra stretch, nice 
And here again, actively drawing the shoulders down. Just 30 more seconds here. Slowly coming down, taking our time, coming down onto our bellies, bringing the hands, uh, the palms onto the mat, fingertips touching, and we can just rest our our cheek down onto the top of our to the top of our hands and rock the hip side to side just to release the lower back. Turning out the other side, bringing the chin, the cheek onto the opposite cheek onto the hands. Okay, from here with again with as little movement as possible, we're just going to literally switch onto our backs. So just pressing into one hand, don't worry about being at the right or wrong end of your mat we're just going to come onto our backs i'm going to turn around so i can see you but everyone else just do whatever's the easiest possible so bringing the knees into the chest here firstly we'll just give them a bit of a hug in massaging through the lower back And then we're going to bring our right knee in towards our right armpit and take hold of either our right shin, right ankle or right outer foot for half happy baby. So you can bring your left sole of, um, sole of your foot down to the floor or extend your left leg along the mat, depending how much space you've got there. We're just going to keep squeezing the knee in towards the right knee in towards the right armpit. So this is a, a fairly active pose here. We're not going to stay here for long. Just see if you can feel a bit of a release in the back. And we're going to switch sides, so bringing the left knee in towards the chest and eventually the armpit. You can keep your right sole of the foot flat on the floor or extend your right leg along the mat. Coming into half happy baby on the other side. Just taking hold of wherever feels comfortable, so the shin, the ankle, the outer foot. Could use a strap here if you've got one. Drawing that knee closer in to the armpit. And releasing the, the left foot. We're now going to take hold of both feet and go into a full happy baby if that feels good for you. If not, just carry on switching sides. So taking hold of the big toes or the outer edges of the feet or the ankles, wherever feels right. Just rocking left to right on the spine. Nice, everyone. Okay, releasing that, we're just gonna come into a spinal twist. So, Bringing the, bringing the knees up to face the sky, soles of the feet onto the 
Now, we're gonna lift the hips just slightly and take them over to the right-hand side. And now we're gonna take the knees over to the left, over to the opposite side. So taking a deep breath in as we exhale, lowering the knees all the way down to the left for our spinal twist. The knees are actually together here for now, if that feels comfortable. You might want to put your left hand onto your left knee. You can extend your right arm out to the side or maybe both arms, whatever feels good for you. Before we go any further, we'll just all stay here for a few breaths. You can turn to face the opposite direction to the knees, so over to the right. And if that feels comfortable and you'd like to go a bit further into the twist, you can cross the left knee over the right knee and just add some weight. I'm also tapping my left foot behind my right calf, so like a Garudasana, almost like an eagle twist with the leg. But whatever feels good for you. Letting the body be heavy here. your next inhale we're going to bring the knees back up to the center unravel the legs come back to center and then lift the hips and we'll go on over to the other side so over to the left side with the hips taking the knees over to the right hand side this time the left arm stretches out to the side maybe the right arm as well you can bring your knees up closer towards your right arm if you want a bit more. Or if this is already a bit much, you can move your knees down away, away from you. Just holding here for a few breaths. If your knees are way up off the floor, you can always put a cushion underneath them. You can even put a cushion between your knees. That can be quite nice. And when you're ready, either staying here or crossing this time your right knee over your left, you can loop your left foot around the back of your right calf. Eagle leg. Gazing over the opposite shoulder, or you can bring the neck into a neutral position. Starting to feel the body become heavier and heavier.
So anytime this doesn't feel good, come back to center, take it back a level. That's it, Jenny. Okay, our next inhale, we'll bring the knees back to the center. We're coming into our final relaxation. So putting on any more layers if you've got them. It's nice to be warm. Taking hold of a, uh, a blanket, hopefully, if you've got one nearby. Cushion, turning out the lights as well. I'll close the practice for you afterwards, so don't worry about coming back <laughs> to turn off your phone. I'll, I'll close the, the Zoom session. So getting everything you need for your final relaxation. Getting really cozy, putting your socks on. If you've got an eye mask, that can be quite nice to put over your eyes. Just taking a few moments before we find stillness to get really comfy. Laying down if that's comfortable for you. If not, you can stay upright and just lower the gaze. Or close the eyes. Bring the attention to any noises that you can hear outside. So outside your house, if you can hear any, any cars going by, any dogs barking, airplanes, probably not any, <laughs> unfortunately. Just see if you can focus for a minute on those external sounds. And then listening to see what noises there are in your house, outside the room. Maybe some other people making dinner for you, <laughs> like my brother. Um, maybe you've got pets around. Maybe the fridge is whirring. Just really try and focus your attention on those sounds. Now bringing your attention within your room, your space, wherever you are now. Listening deeply. And finally bringing your attention within the body. Feeling the whole body on the mat. Zooming in to the heart center. Seeing if we can be sensitive enough to maybe tune into our heartbeat. Just listening. Allowing our breath to move into the heart space.
start to deepen the breath. Staying exactly where you are. Just deepening the breath. Breathing in, fill the belly, let it inflate like, like you did at the beginning. And as you exhale, breathe out with a sigh. Take another deep breath in. And breathe out with a sigh. Just going to read you a really short quote from the Dalai Lama. So he says, from my own limited experience, I have found that the greatest degree of inner tranquility comes from the development of love and compassion. The more we care for the happiness of others, the greater our own sense of well-being becomes. Cultivating a close, warm-hearted feeling for others automatically puts the mind at ease. This helps remove whatever fears or insecurities we may have and gives us the strength to cope with any obstacles we encounter. I'm gonna close the practice for all of us and then I'll, I'll close the meeting, like I said, so that you can choose to stay there or get up in your own time. So if you want to repeat with me or maybe just silently in your head, we're just gonna do a chant of Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. Last time. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Om Peace, Peace, Peace Namaste everyone, I hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you all soon, I hope. Sending you all lots of love. Take care.